Here we are again, Tom Carter. How are you, sir? I, I am good. How you been? I'm, I'm you, well. You've been talking your legs off here for the last week. <laughs> We've got ourselves one heck of a step ladder here tonight. The PBA 50 Granville Financial Open. Pete Weber makes the show yet again. But in our first match, we got Tom Adcock, who's a super senior, taking on Chris Warren. Yeah, that's unbelievable because if you look at him, he doesn't look anything like a super senior. No, not at all. And then in the next match, the winner will go on to take on Pete Weber, who was who was bowling with a shoulder injury against Jason Couch. Yeah, he looked like he was really in pain. He was sitting down in between shots. He, he wasn't even going from lane to lane. He'd sit down for the next shot. And he looked like his hip was hurting also. Yeah, but Pete has also been saying a few things around the building, and Craig's going to get to that a little bit later uh, about the injury. And then the winner of that match is going to go on and take on Chris Barnes and then Tom Hess. And they were the poster children for this tour last year. It seemed like they were battling out for titles and play, for player of the year last year as well. Yeah. It's going to be a huge match because, you know, Tommy Hess has already shot 300 in the tournament. He is striking a lot. So is Chris Barnes. So, I mean, it's another kind of we said last week, it's a Hall of Fame crew again. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And we've got our crew as well. We've got uh, Brian Kane producing, and we've got uh, we've got uh, Craig Elliott down below, and John Weber is making his announcements, and we're getting ready to get started as we were running a little bit late getting this thing set up here tonight. Well, they're doing their announcements, uh, John introducing Chris Warren and Tom Adcock. It's going to be a heck of a match. Yeah, let's take it out to the lanes, Brian. So Tom Adcock versus Chris Warren here in the first match, and Chris has been deadly on the fresh. Tom, Chris Warren bowled 289-300. 279 yes 868 on the fresh on the fresh yeah but as soon as they transition then it was 20 20 170 220 yeah so. so and they're on the fresh right now so i didn't expect and his matches against him were also shot like 279s and 267s so both people on the fresh every time he's bowled somebody has absolutely lit them up I think we're waiting on lanes to come on. Yeah, we are. And there's a shot of the set T area there. You see Tom Adcock. Got quite a size difference here, too, as well, Tom. We've got the tall <laughs> Tom Adcock and the and the, and the 100 pounds soaking wet Chris Warren here. Yeah, Tom Adcock, probably 6'1, 6'2, long, lanky. And they say he's 60 years old. I want a birth certificate because the way he throws it, there's no 60 year olds that throw it like that. Third week out here on the PBA tour. PBA 50 tour getting things started here in our opening match Chris Warren on the left lane he did have lane choice squeaks well, with a strike well that's uh, not uncharacteristic because it is the fresh it's the first game and Chris Warren strikes a lot he's only threw two balls the entire tournament the same two balls he's got a pin down Jim and a pin up reality You see Weber in the background back there. Adcock with a great opening yeah. shot there. Tommy Adcock, is he struck a ton of, in the last match to get to here. He was fighting with Chris Barnes. I mean, they were slugging it out, and all of a sudden, he got into, unfortunately, leaving 10-pin after 10-pin after 10-pin. Then he made a ball change, rattled the sheet. Players bowled two eight-game qualifying blocks and then an advancer's round of five. And then it was our bracket match play. The top 24 made it. The top eight got buys. Three pins, or three-game total pinfall. A double for Tommy. Now, this pattern has been a little tricky because in the in the beginning, it it plays pretty tight. Then the guys really got to open up their angles, and I'm sure you talked about it this week. But there's almost, and you can see it from here, down lane. It's almost like a box down there. They got to get the ball to that spot for it to read. And as the game progresses, they're going to open their feet to the left and just open up the angles. It just depends on how you hit that box. Chris Warren's not going to miss. It's kind of funny. Uh, the last match uh, where he shot 300 uh, against um, Chris Keene, 
He was using the reality in that match. Yes, he was. Chris has been keeping his angles pretty tight. He's keeping them a lot tighter than, but how many times have they been oiled? I mean, we talked about this a little earlier. Uh, Craig and I did it. This might be the fifth time these lanes have been oiled. So they're going through a ton of transition. Yeah, five lane oils today, fresh for every round. Warren splits the 8-9. Warren has six professional PBA regular titles, one senior title, 56 regional titles, and he won the 2018 USBC Masters. 56 regional titles. That's a ton. And he just moved. He's, he moved to Plano, Texas. He has He's opening a shop there, and his family is in Plano, Texas. So he's going to be down in Plano, Texas. He's still keeping his shop, I understand, in Grants Pass. Great Ed, shot by Adcock. He makes that look absolutely effortless. Let's take a look at it again. Here is the tall. style of Tom Adcock. Well, he doesn't work at anything. It's just long, lanky, easy, smooth swing. And that was a nice shot out of Pete Weber. <laughs> and you see him smacking his hand because he's been in pain here this last day and a half. So this is a good feeling for Adcock here because with Warren throwing all these strikes on the fresh, he knows he's going to have to strike. And, and Adcock has made another show. He finished second. It's his best finish out here on the PBA 50 tour. Well, he won on the tour as a non-member. And then he he's out here, obviously, fighting for rookie of the year. Rolls out the seven. Tom Adcock from Decatur, Illinois. He's won the Peterson before. He's also, he was part of the winning team on the last ABC tournament, ABC winning team. Speaking of the Peterson, have you ever bowled the Peterson? I have. You, do you know how hard that thing is to win? Very difficult. Oh, my Lord. That's like bowling in the parking lot. Oh, oh look at that look at right that. there. A stand up messenger going across. The thing I love about Chris Warren, he Watch throws this. a shot. Watch this pen action. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up across the lane. <laughs> he just always comes back smiling. If he split, he'll come back smiling. See Weber over there. He was practicing. Craig Elliott is part of the team as well, and we got started a little bit quick there. Craig, you got a copy? I do. I'm here. I know Weber wants to talk to you at some point here uh, during this match before he gets ready to come over. Yeah, we're just all resetting. We thought the practice pair was 13 to 14, and we just found out it's 25 and 6, so we're all moving down here. A 7 10, 10 for Warren, and if you're Tom Adcock, you got to be happy to see that because this guy has not opened in the first game on the fresh yet it, today. No, no, but the thing about it, and I, obviously you guys watched it all week, 7 10s popped up out of nowhere a lot of times for bowlers. Yep. You thought it was a pretty good shot, and all of a sudden, boom. Dino Castillo. He picked, picked up, up 7. He did. Now he so was just a couple lanes down from me, and everybody just went nuts. And I'm like, what happened? <laughs> Chris Warren oh, gives it a run, but now an open frame for Warren. So a little bit of an opportunity here for Tom Adcock now to go up here and take the lead in the match. Well, he, he needs to jump on this because I'm quite sure that Chris is going to come back and start striking again. Tommy on the fresh had been throwing a proton physics, but he's actually throwing an altered reality now with just a little bit of surface to it. So now Adcock oh. leaving yeah. just the 10. These twister yeah. pins, they really fly, don't they, Tom? Well, they, they fly around, but they, they like to stand up, too. I mean, how many four nines did we see? A bunch. <laughs> four nines, seven tens. Big fours, Greek churches. I mean, those seem to be the common leaves if you made a mistake. And you can leave solid eights and solid nines. You hit the pocket on this stuff. I hear they're putting in new Brunswick pins, though, uh, for us next year. So 
Tom Adcock opens up with the front four, then nine spare. Chris Warren four in a row, and that's 7-10 for an open frame. Max score for Adcock, of course, 279 with one miss. And Chris Warren can bowl 266. Opening match, Pete Weber awaits. The winner of that will go on to take on Chris Barnes. And our number one seed is Tom Hess, and he's been the class of the field this week. You know what, Tommy was locked in. Either he was going to be first or fifth. It didn't make any, any difference. But, oh, that was an error and mistake. That ball jumped off of that spot way too hard, leaving a 3-6-10. But there for a while in this last round of eight, it was kind of a, a juggle on who was going to get that one spot. Hey, guys, I'm down here with Pete Weber. Pete's getting warmed up here. Pete, you have a chance to defend your title here in Aberdeen. You had a chance last week. Of course, Parker wins. You have a chance to get your title back here. What's your game plan? Um, the same as it was last year. Just throw the ball hard and straight, try not to cover too many boards, and keep the ball in the play area and leave something I can make. What ball are you thinking? Uh, I'm thinking the reality, the 900 global reality. I'm thinking that's pretty much what I've used all week. So I'm thinking that's pretty much. All right. Good luck on defending that title. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate that interview with Pete. All business down there, yep. Pete is. They had to reset the 3610. It looked like the it had been set off spot, so... He had the opportunity to get it put back on. As long as the machine does it, you can have it put back on spot. Oh, had it put back on spot and almost chopped it. <laughs> yeah, Tom Adcock, he's an excellent spare shooter. <clears throat> and the rev rate of the guys on our, our show is just incredible. Pete Weber being probably the slowest rev rate on the show. Yeah, potentially oh. I could see that, yeah. I would put it between he and Adcock. Well, Pete's going to, he kind of floats it and covers more board. I think uh, Tommy Adcock revs it more. Trips there's the that, there's four, four forward. Four pin forward, yep. And he's, he's walking back like he's a little confused about that and doesn't really understand. The lanes could be going into transition already because this pattern definitely played tricks on you. It, once it started to break down, Balls either started to hang or they hooked early. That mid lane was unbelievably sensitive. We're bowling on anvil lane, which is it's an older surface. And we bowled here last year was 35 feet. And when we came in for the practice round and 35 feet, uh, the balls didn't hook. And we couldn't hardly believe why <laughs> at 35 feet we couldn't get a ball to hook. Warren 10 back. <clears throat> but if you watch how straight Chris is playing and so is Adcock. Yeah, take a look at this. Crossing right around nine? Eight, yeah, eight, eight nine. nine yeah. yeah. So he's not giving it away hardly at all. He's like eight, nine down the lane. That's pretty much what we call on top of it. Tommy with that real relaxed swing. You, you watch these bowlers, and a lot of them never just totally get set because they want to keep that swing relaxed so they keep moving. Kind of like Dominic Barrett on, on the tour. You, you watch him and just kind of bounces around. You yep. just want to keep that upper body loose. Andrew Anderson as well does yeah. the same thing. You, you, know, you see so many people they get on the approach and they just turn into statues and don't move. I want to welcome in all of our viewers watching here on Bowl TV. We certainly do appreciate you coming in and watching the PBA 50 tour. PWBA tours right around the corner. Don't forget you get all PWBA action included in your Bull TV subscription. And all the intercollegiate action, which is there's a ton. Oh, that was that's a heartbreaking 10 pin right there. That ball looked like it was going to go through the pins the right way. And a lot of this, I think, this whole week was a lot about speed. I mean, you didn't see the guys really overthrow it hard. I mean, uh, big guy John Burkett, as hard as he can throw it, he was just kind of slow rolling the ball this week, just getting it around the corner. Yeah, he had a nice finish here this week, his best finish of the season thus far. And folks, about that PWBA, the Rockford Open coming up May 12th through the 15th right here on Bull TV. Emil Williams Jr., Jason Thomas, and Curtis Von Kruger will be bringing you the action. Make sure you tune into the PWBA Tour this year. 
Rockford, Illinois, my old stomping ground. Yeah, you used to run the pro shop there, I understand. Yeah, at Cherry Bowl, yep. There for 10 years before we went to Wayne Webbs in Columbus. Wish we could get a slow motion view of Chris's backswing with that wrist that just pops backwards. It's, it's amazing. Okay, so with that strike there by Warren, it still bowls yeah. 266, 246 for Adcock. Yeah, Tommy can't have any hiccups in, in the last two frames. Ninth and tenth are huge, and this shot for Chris to kind of put the pressure right back on and keep the pressure on Tommy. It's kind of amazing. Chris never played this straight the whole tournament, but 4-9. Oh. So he's 7-10 and 4-9 on yeah. the left lane. So we just talked about that was something that happened on these twister pins, 7-10s and 4-9s, and it can look like a good shot. But this whole match play round today, Chris Warren was really kind of opening up the lane, and this is the straightest he's been. Chris, a good spare shooter, is a possibility of him picking this up with that conventional grip that he has. Yeah, he might be the only player I know on the PBA or PBA 50 tour that throws with a conventional grip. I, I agree with that. Some guys <laughs> use Sargister's to cut down rev rate, but Warren with the conventional grip. Yep. And a Sargister grip, if you don't know, it's kind of a more like really dropped ring fingers, conventional on the ring finger, fingertip on the, on the middle finger. Uh, Big fan of that, and the guy probably almost started it. Uh, Michael Fagan used it a lot. And believe it or not, and I didn't know this until a couple months ago home, uh, Wayne Webb back in the day used a Sarge Easter group. Oh, yeah? So now here's Adcock stepping up here in the ninth frame. Still bowl 246. Oh, great oh. shot by Tom Adcock there. Trips out that 10. Take a look at it one more time. Tommy has got game in hand. He is in control of his own destiny here. He can lock out Chris Warren. Yeah, Warren can max at 230. So that would mean Adcock would need the first hit here in the 10th. If Adcock were to go spare strike, that would be 226. Warren could step up in the 10th frame and throw a double and seven to win. By the way, Tom Hess, I know that guy won the player of the year and the rookie of the year as well. Right. But do we really need his banner hanging down that far right there? A friend of mine just texted me about that. <laughs> and, of course, it's not going to uh, affect the ball, ball roll, the ball slides right underneath it. I'm just giving Tom a hard time. Well, if you, if you look at Tom Hess, he is probably the biggest player in the top five. He's the thickest, that's for sure, so he's got a bigger banner. <laughs> yeah, when Adcock needed that one there, it looks like he maybe missed it a little bit at the bottom, leaves the – Two and the four. So now Chris Warren's going to have ball in hand and the opportunity to advance to take on Pete Weber. Yeah, he needs to double in a tenth. Like you said, double in seven. Adcock's got to clean this up first, though. Not the easiest spare in the world. Don't chop it, Tom. Oh. Okay. All right, I was a little worried about that. Yeah, kind of off his hand. It looked like <laughs> he, might, he might take that two straight back. Pete finally getting warmed up over there. Starting to move. He's been moving a little stiff. Tommy Adcock striking here, 226, and he can only hope for a favor out of Chris Warren so he can advance. Yeah, this is one of those situations where I may have slowed things down taking a re-rack here. Looks pretty good. Does it recover? Okay, oh, gets nine. Well, that ball just didn't look like it wanted to turn the corner. And since they've been oiled so many times, uh, maybe some of that, I know we strip and oil every time, but it almost seems like the back ends are getting tighter and tighter. Chris Warren stepping up. He has to be in a must-strike situation. He's got to have it here. He's got to have two of them and six. Oh, oh solid lower nine. nine. Let's take a look at this again. Everything looked really good yep. off his hand. 
He's walking it out. He thought it was there. Solid nine. And again, you watch it. He's the only guy that I know can leave a solid nine, and he's still smiling and lose. So Tommy Adcock is going to advance to bowl Pete Weber. Yeah, and they're from the same part of the country. They've bowled each other a lot in, in events in the, around the St. Louis area and over into southern Illinois. Spent a lot of time at Jeff Carter's place. And we used to have uh, PBA 50 stops there in Decatur at Strike and Spare Lanes. Tommy's been trying to get us back there. And here comes Pete in his New York Kingpins jersey today. And he's given Tom Adcock his friend five for advancing to take him on. You see John Weber and the beautiful Linda Carter down there. That's Wonder Woman. Yes, she is. <laughs> Nice week for Chris Warren. I am shocked that he didn't bowl 260 or better this uh, week. Yeah, I am too. But, again, he he, though he played the wings totally different than the, the big games that he shot. Congratulations to Tommy Adcock. Great tournament for Chris Warren. Tommy goes on to be play Pete Weber. That's a, that's a tough game there for Chris, right? 4-9, 7-10, and Stone's a 9 when he needs it. I mean, he made some shots. Yeah, definitely, Craig. You're pretty good friends with uh, Chris, aren't you, Craig? Yeah, we, we've been pretty close for a couple years now. Great guy, loves the sport, does everything he can to help everybody. You know, I don't know if you guys saw in that match against John Delaney when, when uh, Chris had that big game one. He's bowling against Delaney, but then I actually helped him during the match to kind of get him lined up, and, and Delaney had a big game too. Yeah, it's not very often that your opponent comes back and gives you a tip on how to possibly beat him. So Pete's gonna gonna practice here, and here's here's the story from from earlier today. He took on Jason Couch, and he tore something in his shoulder or experienced pain in his upper right shoulder. And it was the slowest, most deliberate match I've ever seen Pete bowl in his life. I interviewed him during the match, and he said that he felt pain that he's never felt before. Well, you could tell while we were down. He every shot, he's trying to roll that shoulder back and loosen it up. But then, Pete, after the match, and I was up here setting up, and I didn't have much time to talk to him, he was chomping to bit to get on the air and speak with me. And he was telling me that his shoulder doesn't hurt at all. So that's what I'm kind of curious about right now, is how is Weber going to perform here? Because I'm not seeing any pain, any limping, any sort of issue whatsoever. And during practice, that's what I'm looking for right here. Did he pull a whammy move on Jason Couch? I don't know. But Couch was completely messed up once everything got slowed down. Well, it, he, it, it, got, it got really slow. Uh, and Pete's normally not like that unless he tried to slow it down on purpose. I mean, everybody does their own thing. You know, Norman Duke out here sometimes takes a little bit more time. But, see, well, he did it right there. There he goes. There oh, goes that shoulder so move. Now, now, so now here it is. So I don't know if what he was <clears> telling <throat> me was to let his opponents know that, hey, no, I'm fine. I don't want you to <laughs> think that you're getting a less than 100%. Pete, Pete, Pete's playing some mind games here today. <laughs> or, yeah, he, he might have been doing this going, hey, look, I'm hurting so bad. You got this match won easily. So I'm just trying to get through the motions. I watched, <laughs> kind of funny, I watched Wayne Webb do that when he won the senior uh, U.S. Open. He'd be limping around back here in the settee, but when he got up on the approach, the approach looked flawless, then he had limp back. I'm like, is that a ploy? Kelly Kulik out there, she has been the Storm Global Ball Wrap uh, for the last three tournaments. Uh, but I'm sure that she's headed to Rockford uh, for she the is. first she was, tournament. She was actually practicing yesterday here. I talked to her for a little bit, and I will tell you that the, she has gained the respect of the players out here on the PBA 50. It is like a family out here, but the advice and knowledge that Kelly has given the Storm, Rotogrip, and 900 Global staffers, they have just raved about it. As a matter of fact, today Pete Weber took to social media just to talk about how great it's been working with Kelly here this week. Yeah, I, I see in the post on Facebook he was just pretty much exuberant at the fact that the knowledge that he, he gave, uh, she was spot on. He, every, and there was a whole list of comments. All the Storm guys and Global guys, Roto Grip guys, appreciate the fact that I mean, she is pretty much meticulous, you know, checking lanes, you know, surfaces. And she's been here the whole time nonstop. Yeah, and she's right down there with Pete, giving, giving him another set of eyes. 
I think after she leaves and goes back on tour with uh, Mitch Beasley is taking her spot. Yeah, and Mitch uh, had to withdraw from the last event at the Villages, and he's going on to have some surgery, and he will probably miss the rest of the season as a competitive bowler, which is just too bad because uh, Mitch is a tremendous talent and a tremendous guy to have out here throwing a rock down the lane. Well, one of our uh, players that made the top five last week, uh, Troy Lent, had to withdraw this week because we talked about it on the show that his thumb was absolutely hamburger meat, and he just couldn't stand it anymore, so he withdrew because of an injury. There's a lot of games out here. I mean, time you, you have your practice, your pro-am, and it's a three-hour practice session. So once you go through that, the pro-am, then you're bowling eight, uh, 16 games, and you got practice before those eight-game blocks start. I mean, you've put it in a ton. Then if you make the match play and, and the cashers round, you got 50, 60, 70 games. depends on how many balls you throw in practice. We failed to mention this, but this pattern that they are playing on is the Billy Hardwick pattern. 44 feet in length at Oil's 35 and buffs to 44. I want to thank Eric Pearson for all the information that he gives us here. He is the PBA maintenance director. He's headed to Jupiter, Florida after this event to go handle the regular tour. Well, then who is our lane man next week? I believe his name is Corey Lamont, maybe? Corey, Corey. You got me. I don't know. We're, and we're going to be in Mooresville, North Carolina, which is only about three hours away. Bowling on the Mike Alby 39-foot pattern. Yes, sir. I was <coughs> given the lane graph already for next week. Then our final stop of what we call our first swing or the East Coast swing will be at uh, Sterling, Virginia. And the finals will be in the the home of Bill Moore, and that's on the Johnny Petraglia 46-foot pattern. Yes, sir. Hey, tonight's final is fifth place <coughs> was $2,000, fourth place $2,500, third place $3,000, second place $4,000, and the champion takes home $7,500. Chris Warren will receive $2,000 for fifth. One and three cash ratio out here on the PBA 50 tour, and there's also some super senior checks also available. <laughs> After the cash, the top eight super seniors, uh, they get $1,000, and that number was, it took 212 over, I think, to make the cut, or 210 to make the top 36. Then the eight super seniors after that got checks, and that number went to 142. <coughs> So here we go, Adcock versus Weber. Good friends, a lot of respect for one another. But when the lights come on, it's showtime and the friendship stays back here. It's showtime and go time. <coughs> a little hesitation getting the uh, pins set up, but uh, once the pins get set up, Tommy will be starting the match on the left lane. Almost a 7-10 on the very first shot on the left lane. That left lane could be a trick today. Yeah, well. You know, we've seen them get tighter down lane throughout all of the other matches that we called here today. And when they start <coughs> to get tight down lane, they start to hook earlier, and you're throwing it to a spot where the bowling ball doesn't want to come off the end of the pattern. And then if you do move just a little bit right or move your eyes a little bit left, it has a tendency to want to go high. Well, what, you know, the big thing that happens is, you know, a lot of the guys use surface because the lanes were so tight. So, you know, and as you've seen Kelly doing, they're, they're scuffing up balls. So, they're soaking all the oil off the front part of the lane. The, the heads start to dry out. The ball starts to want to read a little early, but we got oil carried down. 
And so that's not a good combination when you've got early hook and tight back ends. You've got to figure out a way to get the ball through the front, get it to the break point, and still make it make the turn strong enough to strike. Weber opening shot looks okay. Uh, Leaves a 10 pin of his own. He's kind of smiling about that. I think he thought that it was uh, going to be okay. He's taking a walk to yeah. get his spare yeah, ball. His spare ball is down behind lanes 15 well, and 16. Well, there's some confidence. You never take your spare ball because you think you're going to strike all the time. Yeah, I'm not even sure if he knows where it is. He's looking in a second bag now, and he has found it. Looks like it's a fast pitch is the spare ball. Here he comes. Great shot, Brian. <laughs> the, the, uh, the unique thing about Pete, most of these guys out here have big three-ball bags, three-ball totes. Pete has two two ball <laughs> yes he does some streamlined <laughs> thunderbacks i think they are <clears throat> pete covers the spare and like you said he is the defending champion here pete weber won here last year he also won at the villages last year so he won back-to-back -back weeks out here on the pva 50 tour he defeated brad angelo in both of those contests and and today he makes his second show in a row losing last week to jason couch in the opening match Several years ago, Pete was on a roll where he had won five tournaments in a row. It was insane. And he was on the show on the sixth one. But uh, I think the nerves got to him. <laughs> How about that for a love tap nine on, 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 the, on the night? Eight. I heard somebody in the background going, push, 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 push. Yep, I think that was <laughs> Kelly Kuehler. <laughs> there goes the nine. Pete playing the lanes a little farther inside than Tommy. Tommy's been you know, pretty firm to the outside, but once they tear up this middle, I'm quite sure that Tommy's going to move in a little bit and start arcing it because you, you pretty much got to go around this pattern at some point because the heads just go away. I think this surface is original to this bowling center, which means it's been here several years since this is regular anviling. Yeah, Adcock with a great shot there in the second frame. I think Tommy just went back to he went back to the proton physics. He was throwing that altered reality. He went back to the proton physics. He's a little bit, you know, more surface, big ball. Barnes is barking at uh, at Tommy Adcock. They they are buddies. I will tell you a couple weeks ago. Uh, Barnes, when Adcock was leading the event, uh, he was talking about, man, Adcock, I think we need to check his check his birth certificate. I don't think he's 60 years old. Well, that's, that's just it. I, I said it earlier. I, there's no way. He doesn't even come close to looking 60. He doesn't even look 40, for God's sakes. If Adcock does beat Weber <coughs> and he bowls Barnes, it will be a rematch from the last round. It was Adcock versus Barnes, and Barnes won, but Adcock got in by being the highest seeded loser. Yeah, see, Tommy's moved in. He crossed like 16, 17 there at the Arrows. Yeah, let's watch it again and here and break this down. Right there, just left of 15, takes it out to probably 10. Yeah, maybe, you know, yeah, maybe 10. Yeah. Keeping his angles tight. Adcock looks comfortable now, too. I think in the first match he... Mike got a little squeezy, squeezy on a couple of shots there against Warren, thinking he needed a big number. I think he was kind of lucky to get through well, that match. Well, and they always say out here, winning's a process. The more times you, uh, you know, you first you qualify, then you make match play, then you start making the show, and after you make it enough times, uh, the percentages are with you. You're going to win, and he throws it so good that it's just a matter of time. Pete didn't like that shot at all. That went basically left off of his hand. That yeah, sure did. You know, you talk about the, the lane surface here. The, last week we bowled on head and lanes, and there was no range finders or tracers or dark mm -hmm. marks down the lane, right, which we've right. all got so accustomed to and used as a tool. Right. This week, same situation, no yeah. down lane markers. And the head and lanes were actually a little more, I guess, darker beige. These are really shiny, so there's a lot of reflection on these lanes. Yeah, you can see the American flag <coughs> there, and you can see some of the planets in that also appearing on the lane as well from the masking units here. So when you don't have range finders, and, and we're getting spoiled because back in the old days when we had wood lanes and the wood was different colors, you could always pick out a spot down lane. But now, without range finders, if you're in a situation like this here, 
you can always reuse, I think a lot of guys use the reflection of the pins on the lane. So, I mean, if, if you look at either the 6 or the 10 or in between the 6-10, the reflection down lane, that kind of gives you a break point that you can throw the ball to. Pete, at right around 16-17. Just not the same amount of speed and rev rate as Tommy, though. But it worked. That one again, Pete. Just look at the way this, this goes through the pins, kind of just a can opener. Yeah, and if you watch that ball after it hit the pins, it kind of deflected to the right. Yep. Which is really not what you want. You want your ball driving into the pins. Right. But if you drive too much, then you can leave nine, nine pins, pins and other weird things. So uh, I said it earlier, you know, the ball tells you what the lane's doing, but the pins tell you what the ball's doing. So the ball might look right, right going down the lane, but it doesn't look that good going through the pins. Adcock sending about everything he possibly can over to the <laughs> 10 pin there. Yeah, he, the only thing he didn't send over there was the pins on 19. <laughs> they didn't go over there. Pete just called Kelly Kulik over for a little opinion. She just came down there. Yeah. Kelly can give advice, but they can't change any of the surface of the balls. Right. I mean, uh, that part of the, the program is done. Now, they can in between these matches, but during the match you cannot change surface of the ball. So... He might be looking for a little bit of extra eyes. Maybe she's seeing something different than what he's feeling out there. It's a great opportunity to thank the staff here at Sand Hills Bowling Center for hosting this event. Really appreciate their hospitality. The guys here have been awesome to work with. Well, the whole staff here is awesome. They actually, last year, in the parking lot, uh, we had to leave part of it open. They wanted us to leave a lane open, and so it was really crammed. This year, they go, we got the whole parking lot. Don't worry about it because we had more coaches than we've ever had uh, at a PBA stop. So we're, like, stacked on top of each other. A two-pin ball just didn't read the lane. No, it sure didn't. I believe throughout this entire broadcast here tonight, the lanes will develop to be tighter and tighter down lane and it will be who can make the right adjustments to overcome that that will probably take home the title. I don't, I don't know how – I know you've been watching the scores and I've been traveling all around through the center today. But in qualifying, 19 and 20 were a little tough to score on. They, they weren't some of the highest scoring pairs that we had in the center. Yeah, we, we had pretty good scores uh, throughout <coughs> our feature pairs, 17 through 20, in which we had – we saw most of the, the lower scores that we saw – on the lower end of the building, Tom Hess did bowl 300 on 19 and 20. That was well, the pair that he bowled 300 on. But we also did see some folks come through and struggle on this pair. So I believe that they played a little bit different than most of the rest of the house. Yeah, the, the low end, uh, Chris Keene, who was actually in the top eight, had bowled absolutely phenomenal this week, uh, only had one game under 200, and that fell on three and four. Like you said, the, the low end of the house was a little tough. Hey, guys, I got, I got Kelly Kulik back here. Kelly, what was that conversation with Pete before that shot? Well, the plan was really try to keep it up the lane a little bit firmer where Squeaks was or Chris Warren was and Tom Adcock. But when he threw that one on the left lane a little bit to the right and recovered, he saw he has a little bit area down there. So now he feels like he can trust it. We got a little left with our feet, a little bit slower. Not slow with our ball speed, but smoother with it so it floats there and just tries to tip up more in the back for him, create a little right. bit more shape. Thanks. Good insight there from ball rep Kelly Kulik. Well, if Pete feels like he's got area down lane, then the numbers are going to start coming. That was a little deeper on the lane. That was more like 17, 18 at the arrows. Yeah, it comes in behind the head pin. You know, you would think advantage Weber if you need the ball to be able to, to have a little more time to get back to the pocket on this 44 feet in length pattern, not Adcock with the higher speed. But currently right now, Adcock just kind of overpowering the pins. Be a little frustrated. We can see in the reflection on our monitor here, and we, we talk about those boxes. You can almost see those boxes where – there's that two to two strip down lane where you got to get the ball to that dry spot down there. Otherwise, it just doesn't read. 
And you can hit the pocket, but your percentage of trying to strike is like nil to none. Tommy always does that swing move before he starts to keep that swing fluid. Seven pin for Adcock. Hey, we're down here with Chris Barnes. He's getting ready for his next match. Chris, you won the title in Lubbock last year. Another chance for title two here against uh, one of these two players. Are you watching what they're doing? Influence your ball selection? Uh, not a lot. I'm not surprised by what either one of them is doing. Uh, they're both kind of in the track pretty firm. Pete's just slightly left to that, but uh, I'm not throwing it very hard. So uh, I'm, I'm planning to be a little left to both of them, and, uh, and I'll probably either throw a UFO alert or a phase four. And uh, uh, kind of the idea is just be inside of what they're doing and using the friction they're creating. All right, good luck. Thanks. Good insight from Barnes. Mm -hmm. Always has his thoughts gathered yep. and, and delivers them in such a, a way that we can all completely <laughs> understand. And Chris looks like he's going to play a little bit left of the guys. And, and, you know, that's what happens out on the PBA <laughs> tour, the regular tour. The guys that can play in and the others mm -hmm. cr cr get rid of that yeah. hold for everybody right. else. Right, exactly. And, and Chris's rev rate is higher than anybody else on the show. Hey, at one point uh, earlier this week, I – Obviously, he's revving the devil out of him, but he wasn't striking. He goes, sometimes it doesn't have <laughs> do any good to have a high rev rate because you still can't strike. Tom Adcock strikes after three consecutive <laughs> nines. Take a look at that one again. <laughs> nice shot by Adzies. I like to call him yeah. Adzies. There's another tournament that I stream out of St. Louis. He and his good friend Jason Queen have won it back-to-back -back yeah. years called the Holiday Doubles. And down the stretch, we called them Adzies and Queensies, <laughs> and it kind of <laughs> stuck, so I call them Adzies. Well, Jason Queen... Won the Masters. He shot 300 on the show. He sure did with a red wolf. Yep. Hooking it about a half a board. <laughs> Jason only hooked it about a half a board. Yeah. And I know Jason's watching here tonight. Hope you're doing good, pal. Pete with a possible 249 if he can sheet to Tommy Adcock, 247. And that was almost a 49, and he didn't like that off his hand either. So the way our game is scored, Pete has a one-pin lead in the match. But as you and I both prefer, the max scores. Well, it is, we like the max scores because these guys can strike a lot, and it's, it's exactly. easier to add up. <laughs> so Pete can finish out with 238, Adcock one, or 247. Seven. Whoa. That just about missed the nine-pin to the right. If Adcock were to win this title tonight, he will have gone through Chris Warren, Pete Weber, Chris Barnes, and Tom Hess for his first title. That would be well earned. Yeah, that's pretty much a Hall of Fame lineup that you beat. And it's like that every week out here now. I mean, you and I have called now. This is our third broadcast. And every week we just see the cream of the crop. That would be like, I don't know if uh, years ago you watched, when John O'Drobedick won the show, he went through uh, – Earl and Roth and Marshall uh, to win his only title, but he walked the ladder through that. It was quite impressive. Pete with it, a light mixer four pin. But you can see the determination on his eyes. I mean, he, as he was going to the line, he just doesn't understand that his ball is not reacting. So. I'm surprised that he hasn't tried to, and maybe it's the wrong move, but a lot of times Pete likes to circle it a little bit more. Move a little left. Yeah, and really get his hand around and give it some more axis rotation. And since he can slow it up, once it slows up and hits that spot, it's going to go left. It just doesn't look like it's going left that hard right now. Yeah, he's signaling to Kelly Kulik about uh, potentially maybe making a ball change or making some sort of adjustment in his own change. We will see, but Tom Adcock now has a great opportunity here. Yeah, he throws the one in the eighth and ninth. He is set up really well. That puts a ton of pressure on Pete. And Pete not really seeing the lane the way he wants to. Uh, Tommy could be moving on to Chris Barnes. And if that happens, that's going to be a, a unique match. Yeah, Adcock, it's going to be important for him not to get too quick with his bowling ball here. Aced it. Yeah. Splits I, the 8-9. Tommy, you watch this. He, he, you, you said quick. He just never gets quick. He, his rhythm to the line is 
impeccable. When the heart rate goes up and the adrenaline gets going and Adcock never winning out here, typically what, what happens is, is bowlers tend to get a little quick, whether if it's with their footwork, with their swing, or with their speed, which creates an errant shot. I think Tommy's bowled in enough pressure situations, winning the <laughs> yeah, things that he's he won. He knows how to breathe and slow that down yeah, and, and take one shot at a time. You know, not look ahead and go, I can shoot or worry about what happened in the past. The only shot that matters is the one he's in now. Great advice for anybody watching. There's the light mixer that Pete couldn't get. So Adcock here, take a look at this, and, and this is consistent what we're seeing by the right-handers. Yeah. yeah, right around 16, 17, out to about 10. Uh, so I think Pete, that last shot on that left lane, was inside of that. The ball just didn't read. So Pete's in a must-strike situation here. At the beginning of the week, we were making some predictions up here in the booth, as we like to do. Sometimes we look like geniuses. Sometimes <laughs> we look like idiots. But I did say at the beginning of the week that no lefty would make the top five this week. You said that. I did, on the air. Two other lefties, actually. Really? Yeah, I thought we were going to get one with Couch. <laughs> that was pretty ballsy. It was. <laughs> Ten pin, and unfortunately, that pretty much almost seals the deal for yeah, Pete. Yeah, Weber, Weber's been around the pocket. He just couldn't get his ball to go through the pins the right way and face up, which we talk about all the time when we call bowling. So... What we missed out on, and I can't believe you let this slide since we're tied one-to-one -one on who was going to win this. I mean, we the last two weeks we had to pick somebody well, well, we in the do beginning. It, we do it well. No, we do it right, at the, right before the title match, remember? Uh, oh, well, you can also pick the one th to start with. But okay, you want to do that right now? <laughs> How about we do it between games? Okay. All right, we'll do that because I think you got a little sly pick up your sleeve, and I think you're wanting to show me up and go up 2-1. Well, it might be the only time I get ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Watch yourself, Carter. Watch yourself. <laughs> Here we go, Pete. Now that one faces that, up beautifully. Yeah. See, I, I think he went around that a little more. He, he was doing his hand motion. and Pete has always been great. And one of the things that nobody could ever duplicate in a thousand people or a million people have tried is his hand release. What he does, you get that 90-degree axis rotation that he can create basically so 216 the max score for Weber 247 for Adcock basically Tommy just needs to uh, turn the corner that ball never changed direction no it just fizzled out down lane and that makes Tommy I think a winner sitting on the bench. Yeah, it, it does. And, and it's, that's going to be the story going forward with just the right-handers left with, with Barnes, Hess, and Tom Adcock is, is going to be how can the players get the ball to come off the pattern on the left lane and face up to the pocket. Because even Adcock, when he struck, he's been light. But, hey, you got to hand it to Pete it, Weber. This has been a strange day for Pete Weber, it, I will say that. Yeah, It didn't look like he was going to make the show uh, – at one point bowling against Couch because then things changed and, and he's here. But I don't think he's had the best look today. And he's still confused. He, he's, he's, he's talking to Renee and Kelly going, that lane. <laughs> 204 for Weber. Tom Adcock now is after. You can have an opportunity to maybe throw some other bowling balls if he likes. Sticking with this one on the first shot, and there's another light hit. So that's what we got to look for going forward. Seven count. Well, he's even. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah, he's got two oh eight in the dirt. Right? Yeah. But if he picks this up, I, I agree with you. I think he should maybe change, try a line change, do something just to see what you got. Yeah, I'd like to see something that starts up a little bit sooner. I think he's got a dark code that he likes to use. Uh, that, that starts up a little bit more in the mid lane. I've seen him use that in, in weeks past. I, I know you kind of talked to the players about their arsenal. Oh. Now Adcock's not going to get that opportunity no. by having an open frame. 212 to 204, mm. the final score here yeah, in was, our second match. Yeah, he has that alter reality in the Proton Physics, but he's got a Zen Soul down there, new brand new ball. And I haven't seen that go down the lane yet. Yeah, no, me neither. So Pete Weber is going to finish in the fourth position and Tom Adcock has won two matches now. So this next two matches the rev rate has just gone up. Yes. 
So who do you like here tonight, Tom? You wanted to put me on the spot. Maybe let's bring it into the booth for a minute, Brian, and we'll get this we'll get this front and center. Uh, let's see. Yeah, who, uh, do you, who do you like uh, here tonight? Uh, uh, I'm kind of happy to go with uh, Tommy Hess. You're picking Tom Hess. Well, here's my analysis of this, okay, is – Adcox had an opportunity to bowl on this on this pair now for a couple of games. He's starting to get comfortable, but he is going to have to do something to get the ball to tip, or he's going to have to make a slight adjustment to stuff it more into the pocket. Okay. I think Barnes coming over here and wanting to play a little bit deeper than the other guys, I think that he's going to struggle at first, but I think he could throw a five-bagger at the end of the game. So I just think it's going to take about 234 to get through this match, and I'm going to go ahead and take the safe play with Adcock because he's been on this pair, and then he's going to bowl Tom Hess, and I believe that Tom Adcock is going to get his first title here tonight, beating Tom Hess. Does that mean you get Barnes? Yep, you get Barnes. You, 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 I'll you, take you, him. Yeah, okay, Sold. you got Barnes. All right. All right. That's, you know, uh, that's my pick here tonight. I like the way you broke that down. And I, I honestly, I'd like to see Tommy Adcock win. I, I've known Tom for a long time. We're both Illinois boys. But I, it's just, the two guys at the top are going to be tough. Yeah, I rode like, up with Tom Hess. I, we got Major Tom at the top. <laughs> I rode up with Tom Hess. He's one of my best friends, okay? And we had a great talk this week about his plan, and he's done everything so far that he's needed to do. No matter who wins this tonight, they're all my friends. They're all people I root for. But tonight I'm going with Adzies. I'm going with the guy closest to where I have grown up and lived in the St. Louis market. I'm going with Adzies tonight. But I would love to see any of these guys win. And Sue Hess. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you ever say you rode up with him, so you know everything. I know, you know everything. Yeah, see, that's that's not even that's not even right. All right, let's take it back out to practice. <laughs> so there's our predictions. Who do you guys like in the chat? Well, let's remember, guys, this is a rematch of, of the uh, the last uh, round there with Barnes and, and Adcock. And, and it was a pretty good close match, but Adcock just never got the ball going through the pin yard. He was hitting the pocket a lot, but just had really not much carry. Barnes is aware of that, and he's going to get inside him, and I think that's going to affect the carry again for Tom, unless he can really just soften up and get the ball to roll. Well, Chris is throwing that UFO alert pin down with some surface on it, and he, he's going to rev it up. I know he, he's standing seven, eight farther left than everybody else. And he's crossing 20 out to 8, 10. Oh, we got predictions all over the place. We got Hess. We got Barnes. Yeah, see. <laughs> I got to give a shout out to the commissioner of the PBA <laughs> tour, by the way. He's checking in throughout tonight's broadcast. Tom, I hope you're doing well. Sitting next to another wonderful Tom right here tonight. <laughs> happy, uh, happy. <laughs> few weeks belated birthday Tom Clark I think he's not <laughs> eligible for the senior tour yet is he you know what I think he I bet he is I'm calling Has him old <laughs> I think uh, he yeah. should come out and run the event yeah. one week and let John yeah. bowl I, I there you go and I, th I, th I think Tom ought to bowl out here one week if he's 50 he ought to be out here See, uh, he's getting wiggled down lane. That's with the phase four. On he the left lane. He switched balls. The UFO didn't do that. The phase four did. Got all kinds of people checking in here tonight in the chat here on Bull TV. Once again, we do appreciate you being subscribed to Bull TV. This is our third week being out here. With new equipment, we're the B team out here is what we like to say. That way we fly under the radar. Oh, we, we're the B team? We're the B team. Okay. But this is where bowling lives. It, it is. It lives right here, here. Tom. <laughs> you, you, read, you read the script. <laughs> we got to start getting into some of our production meetings that start at 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We talk about it all week long. We've had a blast here on the air through all the qualifying and then throughout <laughs> the advancers round and then even throughout – our bracket play, of course, with the great matches. Well, you get so many players up here to talk during the week. I mean, we do. That, that's awesome. I mean, uh, I've I seen Schaefer's up here and uh, Michael Hogan, and I don't know, probably 
everybody. Yeah, I you mean, get everybody. Yeah, everybody was up here. Gary Faulkner, we had Mike. Yeah, you said Haugen. Dino Castillo spent some time with us. So this is a tough one for Kelly because she, her being the storm rep, she, she's got to tell them both what to do. You yeah, know? I thought Barnes was going to leave her hanging there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and her knucks out. Come on, yeah, let's come go. On. She's doing a great job. I know we've talked about that several times. We wish her luck this year on the PWBA tour. Yeah, she was out here practicing the other day. Yep. Then the other day, after they got all done uh, doing our motorhome thing, out walking the dogs, I mean, it was late. And she's getting in her car, and I go, you just now leaving? She goes, yeah, I, I practiced for about an hour or so. so she, in here when nobody was here, and she was still practicing. Headed to Chuck Gardner's place right after this. Oh, tell him I said hello. Here we go. Bowl for life. Great thing that he has going there. But here's Chris Barnes on the left lane starting the match. He elected to start on this lane. Oh, oh. Uh oh we got a problem. You know, I was part of another video where something like that has happened before. You can't blame our cameras. Oh, Brian on the replay here. Take a look at this. That's a bad feeling. It looked like a strike, too. Yeah, so I'm wondering what happened here. Both pin setters went at the same time. I'm not sure what the scoring does for so, this. Not scoring what the <laughs> – <laughs> Chris just turned around and told the crowd, I'm glad it happened because I thought I was going to get six. I saved you from a 4-9 or something. Yeah, now I wonder if they have to clean the bowling ball or anything. Well, if there's uh, stuff on it, I mean, Chris is checking it over now. And he, he'll have the right to clean that. And so a little delay a, in the action. And this has been a delayed day. It's like we just had all these delays today for whatever reason. And yet so, here's another one. So how bad d does that mess with your psyche? You're lined up. you got your thought process going. You're ready to go. And then a monkey wrench just gets thrown in the action. Yeah, that was I'm, – I'm just glad the lane didn't break because then we would have been sitting here for a while, Tom. And, and my St. Louis Blues play tonight. I'm not going to talk about other sports, but my St. Louis Blues do play tonight. You'd have to go get me a glass of wine to sit here. And Charlie Tapp <laughs> and I have a side bet, by the way. And if you're watching this on YouTube later, you might want to sign up for Bull TV because there's going to be a pie in the face for whoever loses this series in the NHL playoff between Charlie Tapp and I. Oh, look at that. Perfect See, shot. It, it, I don't think he liked that because that was a little left of where he'd been playing. It was like 21. I, I, right on at fourth arrow. Down to 10. But guys that have rev rate like that can do that. Yeah. You know, uh, I they can kind of – I always tell people don't try to overpower the lane for the most part. But when you've got that kind of rev rate, you can kind of muscle the lane a little bit. Ooh, almost, Adcock. almost a four nine. You can see that Tommy's ball doesn't have the angle entry. It's it's a different angle entry. It's a softer angle entry at the pocket than what Barnes is playing right now. Well, I I <coughs> like I like this sign for for Tom. I know it's the right lane. The right lane's hooking a little bit more down lane, changing direction a little bit more. But but I don't want to see him leaving those light hits, those two pin combinations, because you have a less chance of throwing a strike when you're running over the rack for four pins, nine pins, things like that. You, you can carry and trip some of that stuff out, but those two pins are tough to trip. Oh, no doubt. One of the, the bowlers here, the, it's a good friend of mine, he said the biggest thing about bowling here is half pocket normally carries better than hitting the pocket, but on this pattern, I don't think that plays so well. All right, this is the, this is the lane for me for Adcock. So Tommy's not standing quite as deep. It looks like he's standing on about 28, and he's – Right of the fourth arrow. All right. Comes so, in behind the head pin for a 10 pin. So he's playing about 18. So their angle down the lane is, is a lot different. I wonder if Tommy's going to bring out that Zen soul and, and give it a shot. <clears throat> Barnes has used that ball the last couple weeks as well. Brand new ball. Uh-oh. All uh, right. Didn't look clean off his hand. That almost looked worried. like it bounced. Didn't like yeah, he threw it in the it lane. Did. It or did. maybe <laughs> It was just the angle I looked at that. Looks like Barnes is using the same ball on the right lane. See Chris getting started here. He's got a very tight thumb hole and oh. fingers. Unbelievably tight. Ball is locked in there. Classic style of Chris leading with that left hand thumb down. 
Opens that shoulder up. Take a look at this one one more time. You can see that perfectly, Tom. And, and all the young players today, they lead with that left hand. Yeah, I want to tell you something about Barnes, Tom. Two weeks ago, I was watching him bowl. He was bowling well, but he was popping out of almost every shot. He wasn't sticking the shot. He wasn't staying down, at least till the ball hits the arrows or in the two-thirds of the lane. And I asked him about it. He says, I'm just trying to get through it as best as I can. I can't stick shots as good as I'm getting older. But tonight, I'm seeing him stick the shots, at least so far I have. Let's take a look mm -hmm. at this one. Good balance. Yep. Walk out, out a little bit later. Yep. Oh, he snaps that out. And, and he's, it's hard he's got miss room left. I think you identified that on his last yep. time over here. You thought he was deeper than he yep. really wanted yep. to be. But he did tell yep. us that yep. he was going to play well, deep. Yeah, and he hit that, I, I think, around, you know, at our angle, 21, 20, 21 uh, to 10, 12 down lane. But as you get older and you talk about balance, it, it becomes harder because as minute, much as you bowl, I mean, your hips and the knees and your – you all take a beating, and you want to stick the shot, but then again, on some of these patterns, you need the speed. You don't definitely want to use your upper body. Tommy just can't get the ball around the corner to get the 10 out. No, nope, Barnes has them figured out early here. Our chat room is telling us that they believe that is a Zen soul <coughs> being thrown on the right lane by Barnes. So will Barnes beat Adcock twice in one day in back-to-back -back rounds? We will see. But Tom Adcock's going to have to figure out a way to knock down 10 soon. Yeah. It's not like uh, the the rounds prior to where it was three game totals. <laughs> you don't have any extra frames. You've got seven left, and you better do something. <clears throat> He's got to get that ball to shape. I'm just surprised, and it happened in the match with Barnes, when he finally got the ball to shape, he changed balls, and he's still, he's kind of, this is almost like a replay of the match with Barnes before they got to the show. That one will probably shape, and it did. That, I thought, was going to be high through the face. That kind of looked like it was going left quick. Yeah, he's playing a little bit of the hold, I think, here. Notice that. And he got around it a little bit to yeah. project a little bit more down yeah. the lane. That w Delay the hook. That was exactly what I call high flush. Okay, catch mark helping us out. Tom's using the Zen Soul and Barnes is using the UFO alert. Thank you for the uh, the update there in the and chat. Chris is trying to pull his hand out of it and start all over again. Yep, sure is. I would probably have completely reset here, set the ball down, restarted everything, but uh, Chris knows his game. Well, that's what they, they tell you to do, just uh, reset completely. Notice Barnes down all the way until the ball hits the pins. I love his balance here tonight. Well, you, when they're on the show, uh, the, the big <laughs> show, <laughs> and you'll see Norm Duke do that. You see Barnes, do, and you even you see Belmo. I mean, you you know as a two-hander, yep. dead rock solid post shot, which shots. is so tough to do. Yeah, because you get that hop step and you get all that momentum going. That ball went down there very quickly for a 10 pin. Don't forget, everybody, the winner of this match will take on our tournament leader, Tom Hess, who led qualifying and went undefeated today in the bracket play to earn the number one seed. For the last... What, I guess a year and a half now? Tommy Hess has been on a roll. Yes, he has. Two majors, uh, player, rookie of the year, major Tom. Wants to change the direction off the end of the pattern, folks. That, that ball is making a huge change compared to what Tommy's doing. His, yep. is, his is way softer. And a lot, of, a lot of times, realistically, softer is what you want. You can control the pocket that way, but it doesn't seem to be carrying. Yep, advantage right now, big time for Barnes. Looks like Adcock is. Uh, He's still in the proton. Yeah, the, the pink and black ball. I guess he used it for a couple shots, that sole. 
this, I guarantee you this is a repeat of the last game against those two had before the show. Yeah, you guys were down there calling that one. Yes. And this is the ex exact same thing that's just happened. Adcock's <laughs> strike percentage very low here. And in frame seven, he switched balls and basically struck out, but it was too late. 20% strike percentage right here. Adcock's hit the pocket every shot. Well, that doesn't do a whole lot of good when your partner is knocking 10 down. Yeah, he's going 80%. <laughs> That's really the difference. Both guys are hitting a 1-3. They're both professionals. They're both the cream of the crop here this week. There's a, uh, I guess, a storyline here in the last couple of tournaments. We seem to be seeing the same players almost every week on the show. It seems like we're talking about the same guys. Yeah, no Brad Angelo this week, though. Brad Angelo came out of nowhere. I mean, he was like only plus six after day one, and as well a 4-9, no good. Yeah, just when you need one to shape properly and you're trying to stuff it in there, then you pay the ultimate penalty here for a 4-9. Then Brad went nuts the second day of qualifying to get in, and then in the, the catcher's round, and he was just kept climbing the ladder. Yeah, he was working hard to get through it. It was odd to see him kind of struggle the first day. Tommy didn't convert the 4-9, uh, a little disappointing. You can tell, he, and I I guess sit, from sitting at this angle, and maybe Kelly will say something to him, but I can't believe he hasn't switched balls because that, that ball's definitely not going through the pins. Here's Barnes. He can max at 279 <coughs> still. Adcock, the best he can do is 225. Barnes in control. He is locked. And if he does go on to bowl the man we see practicing down there, Tom Hess, this is going to be yet another battle royale. Last year, I believe Hess had uh, three titles against Chris Barnes. Oh, this could be a little payback then, huh? It could be, or it could just be a continuation of uh, more four of what times. we saw <laughs> last year. <laughs> Oh, that's like a can opener. Yeah, and this doesn't look good for Tom Hess, and I'm going to tell you why. Look at the part of the lane that Barnes is playing, right? One of the things that affects Hess, not to get too far ahead of ourselves here, but out on the men's tour, on the regular tour, is the rev rate that's inside of him. It, it eliminates his hold. It takes his hold away. So right. he, the only miss he can have is right, and a lot of time there isn't miss right. And tonight there's not miss right. No. So if Barnes is inside of him burning up the lane, that's not good for Hess going into the title match. Well, I was always told, whether it be true or not, you don't want to try to play or look for hold because it's not there. Try to play the friction. So, and obviously Chris is figuring out where the friction's at. Yeah, and he's creating a, he's creating it left of where Hess will be playing, I believe. So, I think you're trying to psych me out so I don't win this match and be no, up two to one. Is I'm, that I'm that's that's what's going on here? Just telling you what I think here. <laughs> just telling you what I think, and I think Barnes deliberately played a little bit further left just because of that. He was the one that actually is, broke that down for me. But uh, nonetheless, how about Tom Adcock getting that strike on the right lane? He can still finish out with 225 yeah. here. As long as he keeps going. Uh, he got, he got that break, light. but that ball is so soft on the back end, it just doesn't sure want to yeah. shape. I mean, it lo almost looked like it straightened out <laughs> on the back yeah. end. Not really the motion you're looking for. You see Kelly back there. She is lining up permission, whatever she's doing, to see exactly where he's playing. Oh, that was unexpected. He thought that was in. He kind of had a little leg kick up like that's good. So Barnes going at a 238 pace and Adcock 225 max. So when I say pace, I'm filling 20 a frame. That's, right. that's to the audience at home. That's what I mean. And which would mean Chris Barnes would have to open in the ninth or the 10th frame for Tom Adcock to have any chance at all. I mean, that's not under the realm of possibility because we've seen enough four nines and seven tens and things can happen, even with pocket shots. 
But Tommy Edcock at this point needs a little love. <laughs> That's, that's right, yep. but it still flushes yep. up. He's yeah. got a he's he, got a pretty big spot to throw to down lane right now. Yeah, he he's, looks like he's creating a steeper angle through the front part of the lane, right through there. Uh huh. But he, he, that box, I'm, I'm going to get it here in a minute. That box, <laughs> you want to tell it to me later? <laughs> I want to. I'm pointing at this monitor, people. If you can't tell, <laughs> <laughs> the box down lane. It's bigger for Barnes right now, and he knew he missed it, right. And on you that can one. see him right there on both sides is that hook spot. Yep, the reflection you can see down there on the lane. That's what the players are trying to get the hook off of. That's at 44 feet down the lane. And those are almost identical back-to-back -back shots of the five and the seven falling out late. I'm not so sure Tommy wants to reproduce that. Uh, all Barnes has to do now is mark in the 10th yep. to win this. but. When you say all you have to do, that's not always that simple. No, it's not. But Adcock's got to got to throw at least a double here. Well, if he does a strike here, it's just finishing frames. Okay, Good. that yeah. might have been the best shot he's thrown yeah. in the whole match. Yeah. Let's take a look at yeah. it again. Yeah. That ball shaped the best of any of his shots. It actually looked like it changed direction on the back end Yeah. compared to the shot previous where it just looked like it almost stopped. Hey, I'm down here with Tom Hess. He's got a few more shots before he gets in the championship match. Tom, you had a plan this week. You led qualifying, undefeated match play in the title match. What's your game plan here? Uh, pretty much to keep doing the same thing I've been doing when I went out there for the four shots earlier. The balls that I've been in and play at this time of the day seem to be working out there. Um, hopefully this one game hasn't changed it too much, and we can just go out there and make uh, ten really good passes. And it looks like uh, you're going to have another chance at Chris Barnes. You've, you've had pretty good luck against him in the last year. You guys got the ball together with Team USA. Um, how are you feeling about that matchup? Um... You know, it doesn't, if I perform, it doesn't matter who I'm bowling. Um, Chris is obviously one of the best. Things have been going my way uh, against him here lately, but uh, none of that matters. You know, that's all in the past. Um, we're going to try to stay present tonight and take it one shot at a time. Yeah, good luck, guys. Tom is really focused on here. I expect a great match. Yes, he is. Like we said earlier, the only shot that matters is the one you're in, and it's what, that's his game plan. That's a good thought process. Barnes just needs a little count here. And gets yep. 10. Chris so, Barnes is going to move on to the title match to take on Tom Hess. Well, this would be a good time to practice, change balls, do something to see if there's anything else out there. Tommy's going to come in and get his four shots. Still, Tom Adcock is having a great year out here on the PBA 50 tour. He sure is. Yeah. Adcock finishes third. Barnes can finish with 258. Chris picked up a different ball just kind of going through the motions. He threw that phase four. It looked like that shot just to see what he had. Now that looks like he's playing the right lane farther right around 18 and the left lane he's playing around 21. So this match is kind of boring. It's uh, familiar to what we saw <laughs> most of last season. Barnes versus Hess yeah. for the title. Well, obviously Tommy had a great year last year. He's starting out to have a great year this year. Uh, it's just in the wings to see if uh, he can continue. I think Chris is in.
determination mode here because he wants some uh, some payback. Hey, did, I, did I hear there, Ray, what John Weber just said, that uh, Tom Adcock is, is a rookie? Yes, he is. It doesn't seem fair. <laughs> yeah, no. how would you, how'd you like to be that good as a rookie? Well, so he could be PBA 50 and 60 rookie of the year? Yep, both. Yes. <laughs> Same time. we got to check that AD. Let me get on that. He's finally got a job that allows him to come out here and be able to play and do some work remotely, and that's why he's out here bowling most of the events, and he's going to keep bowling as long as he can keep doing his job, his real job. Well, that's a perfect, uh, as a bowler, that's a perfect lifestyle if you can work remotely, come out and bowl tournaments, and obviously do as well as he's doing. And that's The left lane is the nemesis. That's 710. He looked up at Kelly like, yeah, I don't know. So you went with Adcock. I did originally. Uh, I was rooting on Adcock. I'm going for the first. I like first titleists. Yeah, I understand. Go, go for the underdog. Uh, but Craig took Barnes. Yep. And you got Hess. Yeah. He's feel, he's feeling very froggy down there, I can tell. You know, if you guys let me play earlier, I'd be 3-0 and on the season. Just saying. <laughs> oh. Ooh. See, that's, that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of that. That ball reaction right there. This is just practice. Maybe just trying to make Chris <laughs> feel like he's got a shot. I don't think Chris is watching this practice. <laughs> I really don't. He's an analytical guy, but I don't see him around. He didn't need him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talking about some batteries up here. <laughs> he didn't need him. That ball goes through the face, so we've seen... Uh, almost a 7-10, and then we saw light, and now we see through the face for practice balls. And unfortunately, his facial expressions, expre expressions uh, are telling him that he doesn't have a look. Right now, right now, yeah. They've got, they've got other equipment. Well, he's been using two altered realities, one basically pin up mass out the other one is pin taller mass in just right above his thumb uh, to try to create a little more shape on the back end so and he has a reality down there but he hasn't thrown it but every shot so far has not struck and that's not a good thing if you're going to be bowling for a title yeah all that all the time had in a practice pair was two realities a pin up and a pin down that was it that's all they brought over here that I saw unless he dragged a bag over Two altered realities? Just two altered realities. Pin That's up, it. Pin down and a spare ball. Okay. Well, we're going to be going to a title match here pretty quick, and Tommy's got – he hasn't got many shots left, so he's got to figure something out. Chris staying warmed up just to the left on lane 16. All right, since I'm out of the uh, – out of the who's going to win tonight to you guys, and it's up to you guys, and I, I'm left out here just – not being able to have any fun, I'm going to go ahead and do <laughs> what I like to do during qualifying, and I'm going to set the over-under on the winning score in this match. That was a nice shot by Hess, by the way. At 236. 236 winning score. Over-under. Two forty-two. You like 242, okay. Greg, what do you got? Well, first, how do you shoot 242? Well, I don't. <laughs> well, that was, I was thinking that too, Craig. Well, I'm just picked a number. It's got to be around 240, so that's good. My number's 247. Oh, hey, somebody could throw a six count around here. I don't know. 247, 242, 236, over, under. Paul Henderson coming in over. Angelo Ferrara coming in over. James coming in under. Jason Haynes coming in over. What's up, Jason? Glad you're watching here tonight. Pass with a 4-9 on that shot. By the way, the, the, the scores up there are, are not really the scores. <laughs> yeah, if you're looking at those, that's not real. That is not real. <laughs> Just FYI. 
These are still practice shots for Hess. Maybe that's what happened when they reset them. We didn't pay attention to the scores when they practiced last time. Is it possible that, uh, uh, that when the racks reset and they cleared them, that's when Chris hit the rack? Well, it could have been. Yeah, that was a weird start to that match. That seemed like three hours ago already. Yeah, hey, I got Tom Adcock over here. And first of all, I want to I want to do something that the whole tour is wanting to do all year. Let me see your ID. <laughs> yeah, because nobody uh, believes. I don't have it on me at this point. Oh, here no. we go. Uh, you know, we're we're yeah, gonna have to funny. we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to double check on this. Nice bowling today. Thank you. Good start of the season. Uh, how much more are you gonna bowl this year? I'm gonna try to hit every one except for Virginia. I'm gonna go back home and get some stuff done at home and and work, and then uh, take a trip out west to Vegas. Uh, hit the storm plant, hopefully, and uh, just work my way back home from there and do the Michigan. Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio runs, and let's see what happens, you know, come August. We've talked a lot about your your, uh, your pretty story career so far, but a chance to bowl for a title here on the PBA 50 Tour. What do you take from this experience here today? Uh, it's, it's, it's a learning, uh, you know, one step at a time. I've, uh, I've Last year I bowled in Anderson, led the tournament by a couple hundred pins and got run over by Parker. So I shot 150 in that game. So I actually feel accomplished that I actually bowled better today. So, you know, one step, it's fine. Um, go on to the next stop and see if I can make the show again and maybe I can get to the title match and give myself a chance to win. All right, thanks for your time. Thank Good you. luck. We did say earlier that it is a learning experience on learning how to win. Barnes is over here hanging out by us. He says, I'm gonna have to move at least one. One arrow? <laughs> One arrow. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's one of the great things here on Bowl TV. We get a great interactive group of players that interact with us all the time. Two-time champion on the PBA 50 Tour, winning both majors at the end of last year to snap PBA Tour Rookie of the Year and PBA 50 Tour Player of the Year honors. Yes, Chris Barnes remembers that, and he might be out for a little vengeance in this match. Chris and uh, Tom kind of fought it out at the end of the year, and Tom came out on top. We'll see what happens tonight. And, uh, guys, good luck. Give them a good show. Ladies and gentlemen, there. Let's give them a nice set of uh, they got to reverse the arrows. Tommy having Chris start the match on the left lane. Which, is, which is interesting to me <clears throat> with the left lane being tighter. Um, Tom finishing on the left lane. I don't know if this is a to apply pressure down the stretch decision or if Tom just really likes the left lane better. Opening shot of our championship match. Not much has changed. Woo. He is still left. Watch this pen action. Well, if you see the, his wrist action and his back swing, he's literally super cupped and just unloads it at the bottom. So here's the thing we're going to see with Hess tonight. Um, we're going to see a pre-shot routine that should be exact every single time. It's something that he's uh, working on this week. Uh, he's working on bowling within himself, staying present, as he mentioned in the pre-game interview, and not worrying about what his opponent is doing. Well, you can't control what they're doing anyway, so... Just stay in your own game. If you know, so many people get wigged out if your opponent happens to trip something or go Brooklyn and strike, then it gets in their head. That looks a lot like what we've seen this entire week here out of Tom Hess. Look yeah. at the balance down and through the shot, sending the yeah. pins left to right. Tommy looks like he's playing from our angle just a little right of fourth arrow around 18 out to like 10. Yep. Tom's been bowling phenomenal this year. No championship round appearances yet, but it's not because of a lack of execution. Notice the breathing. Yeah, he, well, the breathing is a big part. You, know, you, you got to keep that heart rate slow. Adrenaline is 
so easy to get fired up. And you only you got ten frames, and you've already he's only got nine left now. And every shot's got to count. That's going to corner. No, it's not going to corner. Okay, so he leaves the ten pin, and that's the lane. That's the lane that is a little worrisome for me. Well, that's where Tom. in practice he almost left a seven ten. So yep. he's he's got to figure out that left lane. He's going to have to do it quick because I think Chris has got it figured out playing a little like he said he was going to do a little left, and he said he was going to move one board more. So to me, it, it, it always has been amazing on how these guys see lane breakdown and ball motion on the back end and how quick they adjust to it. And they they see things, to me, way before they actually ever happen. Yeah, they sure do. <coughs> now, here here's where, t where Hess could potentially get Barnes. You know, Barnes is hooking it more, and Barnes is having more change of direction off the end of the spot. If the lanes start to dry up and Barnes starts to experience going high on the head pin, you could see open frames. Rings a 10. Yeah. He threw that about perfect. Yeah, that was dead over 20. Fourth arrow. I don't like yeah. the shoulders dejected here. Um, well, when you throw it and you feel in your heart that you threw it dead perfect and it doesn't strike because obviously you want to get out and get to the lead, it, it can take a little bit of wind out of your sails. You're like, All right, am I going to go through this every frame on this lane? Yeah. <clears throat> I think you just got to think to yourself, you just – Got to keep pounding to 1-3. That was a really beautifully executed shot by Chris. And he should be happy with the shot that he made. And, and Chris is taking a re-rack. Yeah, he sure is right here. My guess is he actually saw something wrong with the rack of pins here. I don't think he would take a re-rack this early to collect himself or any gamesmanship. I think there was no. something wrong with the rack here. If you get up there and throw or attempt to throw a shot and you know that the rack is off, that gets in the back of your head too. And you, you try to overcompensate for it. That was a good re-rack. Shot by Barnes. <coughs> Brian's going to queue up our replay here. And that ball literally looked like it split the 8-9. It kept going left right through the pocket. Both players definitely have the right balls in their hands. You know, Hess is going to use the balls that, that, that got him here. You know, he led. You look at Tommy's stance. He's really open with his feet. You, you can tell that he's, he's definitely going to project the ball to the right. He dead posted that shot, and he stared it down, but he almost left a 7-10. Yeah, important to not let that affect him and just go up and just pick the spare. This week, Tom, Tom Hess averaged 234.33. Chris Barnes, 232.14, and that was through advancers round. That's That would be 21 games. 16 games of qualifying, five games in the advancers round. Five players averaged over 230. Michael Haggett, Pete Weber, Parker Bone also averaging over 230 this week through 21 games. To make the top 24, you had to average 218.62. That's a nice number. Sure is. There were some other notable names that bowled this week. You know, Dino Castillo, Dave Wadka. He bowled three events. Now he's got to go back to work with Brunswick. We wish Dave... Uh, a safe flight home, and thanks for being out here for three weeks with us. We saw Bill Rowe from Canada shoe up this week. Still great. looks great, throws it great. Oh, my God, he throws it unbelievable. Jason Couch just missing the show here. Walter Ray right up there again. He was throwing it two-handed this week even throughout some of the games. Brad Angelo also, Michael Haugen, John Burkett had a nice week, just to name a few. That ball got way too far out down lane. I like the speed and I like the, the rev rate on that. But, yeah, you're right. It got it, too far to yeah, the right. He, he got outside the box that we've been talking about. And when that happens, there is an out of bounds if you get out of the box. And the 24810, which is makeable, but I think he's going to need this because he pretty much handed Chris an open frame. And that's 
not the thing you want to do right now. Yeah, Hess is going to correct his own score here. I think he really wanted to put in a strike there instead of that. Six I think you, <laughs> I might have. I might have. If I was just him. See if John <laughs> catches it. Anybody notice? <laughs> Gonna have to hook. He got a chance. Oh, he missed the two pin, but he hit the four eight. I, <clears throat> watching him walk back, I don't like the look on his face. It's like it was almost a defeated look. A little bit, a little bit. You know. I know he's frustrated with the fact that he left that split when she th and he thought the ball was pretty pure off his hand, but he hit that OB just a little bit. No good. Chris is looking pretty cool, calm, and collected right now. I like his game plan, being left of everybody, slow wheeling it, hooking it. This is vintage Barnes. You know, Barnes made all that money and actually had other guys change the way they threw the it ball by going straight up the lane and being up the back of it to win so many titles on the PBA Tour. But out here, having a little more rev rate, being left of everybody, yeah. advantage Barnes tonight. Right. Being able to get that ball to shape stronger on the back end right now is a huge advantage. Again, I've said it a couple of times. I'm really impressed with Chris's fundamentals and the way that he's able to stick the shots. Got around that one, yeah. but it held flush. You know, watched it to release, gets around it just a little bit there. Clears the ball so well, though. Yeah, yeah. Young bowlers don't realize how important posting that shot is. To me, it's like a sniper laying on the ground with a tripod and a rifle. He's accurate for a reason. He's not moving, and if you can post a shot, you got a chance of repeating shots and definitely hitting the target. One other thing also, these two players have become pretty close over the course of the last year. They have not only battled it out on the lanes, but they have a ton of respect for one another. And one of Hess's favorite things that has happened with his relationship with Chris Barnes is the fact that they were able to win or they were able to bowl doubles in Dubai together. And All they right. came out of there with a gold medal too. Yeah, Hess back on it right here. Yeah, that was a beautiful shot right there. Hess was telling me he's really looking forward to hopefully being able to compete for Team USA for many years to come if selected. And well, if he keeps bowling like this. Yeah, with his game, I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer, isn't it? I think, I think it? that's who we want out there. <laughs> One of them, I, anyway. I, I don't think that's a bad choice. I mean, his game is it's simple and solid. Barnes can max at 280. Eskimax at 243. 280 is a nice number. Beautiful oh, shot. Oh, that was a S. great shot there. It's like he willed that ball through the pocket. I like I like Tom's last couple of shots coming off of the the open frame. Looks focused, looks good. Yeah. He sat down, had a drink of his water, and regrouped. Six frame for Barnes. Strike spare three bagger trying to shoot that 280. He's stepping it out. He splattered pins there. Playing that right lane just a hair tighter in the front part than he is on the left lane. Stepped it out again. I think he likes it. Pretty impressive here by Chris Barnes. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's taking no prisoners. That classic style. Uh, 
I'm trying to think of um, Marshall Kent. Mm. <laughs> Did the imp- impersonations uh, of yes. <laughs> Of, yes. of butter and and Chris Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for watching my YouTube channel, Tom. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> That's not out of it yet. He's gonna need a big bagger. Oh, has down right. through the shot. Great balance. Yep. Arm out to the side. Right. Next week. We need a side view. I want to see leverage. All right. We'll add a side view for yeah, you. Yeah, add a side view. Okay. So we, we can see where their, their shoulder's at in relationship to their knees. And you need huh. you want some, what kind of wine you need up here in the booth, Tom? What uh, else can we get for yeah, you? Yeah, a little Cabernet would be okay. good, you know. All right. You need a rocker chair? You need a, you need a recliner? No, no. no, I'm good. I'm good. A extra like, padding like, for you? Like anything, anything you need, you yeah. just let us know. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable I'll right put here. Put in the request. Yeah, it's all more gooder. Tom taking his time, kind of leaned over to look at that rack just to make sure everything's where it's needed to be. Oh, <laughs> Tommy pumped that one out. Sure did. Yeah. Take a look at it. He's, yeah. got, he's yeah. got his whole claw into yeah. this one. <laughs> he did. Please hook, uh, yeah. please hook, please hook. Get the Boy, 10 out. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, he jammed Sweet. on that one. Two forty three the max for Hess, two eighty for Barnes. Well Tommy's coming back and putting some pressure on. Unfortunately he is. that two four eight ten didn't need to be there. I don't think he liked that. He was just hoping it'd be there. It just it was inside. Yeah, it didn't read the pattern properly, so leaves yep. the ten. And he knew it off of his hand. So Barnes going yeah, at a two two thirty nine pace, which would be twenty. Yeah. One seventy nine, one ninety nine, two nineteen, two thirty nine. Hess can strike out for two forty three. But Barnes can Good max at 259. Exactly. So the foundation frame coming up for Chris Barnes is huge. Yeah. And really to have ball in hand, he needs good count and a spare here. Last night we had a little cookout outside. And about 20 of us from the motorhome group. Chris came out and hung out with us, told stories. We had a good time last night. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. He always looks so tense, but he was pretty mellow last night. Laughing, telling stories. Great shot by Chris Barnes. Yeah, the ball came off the end of the pattern here. I want you to watch how it changes yeah. direction. Yeah. goes right yeah. over to the eight-pin spot right here. Yeah, watch right this there. ball. And, it, yeah, it drove right to the eight. Yeah. You know, that could have almost been a solid nine. It, the way that ball was traveling. So Barnes can can max at two two fifty nine, two thirty nine pace, which would be spare strike. Right. Tom Hess pretty much needs to strike out. <laughs> That's an understatement. Tommy posting the shot, staring it down. Pull the cord. No the, matter what it, here tonight, Tom has yes. bowled a great game and a nice rebound after an errant shot in the in the fourth. Yeah, he refocused. Yeah. I and mean, whatever he's seen, whatever happened, because he started out with strike, nine spare, nine spare, then had that split. Whatever adjustment he seen or made was huge for him to finish out this game. If Hess strikes out. I've got a nugget for you. Oh, boy. <laughs> Impossible 243 here, you know. Forcing Chris to throw the first one. You called 242. 
for the game for the winning yeah. score. <laughs> you got a shot. Oh, you just heard Tommy yell, where'd that come from? He did not expect that at all. Not on the left lane. Not on the tighter lane. He must have tried to force that one. Either that or he grabbed it at the bottom of the swing. Trying to make it hook. Yep. Get the corner out. So 219 oh. is all he can bowl. Barnes going to need six pins on the first ball. Yep. God, I almost got my 242. He wasn't expecting that at all. Uh. Barnes just gave us the look over here, and Barnes thought that he got around on, around that one a little bit more. This is not the easiest spare to pick up either. Three six nine ten, but he got it. Yeah, so two nineteen. Yeah, yeah strike for two nineteen. He's obviously disappointed because he knows all Chris has got to do is get up and hit something. Yeah, get six. Get six on the first ball. So is Chris five, five out, we'd have a tie. I don't think that's going to happen. Chris might just walk up and throw the high hard one down the middle. Two eighteen. The nugget I was going to give you, Tom, is Barnes had Hess on his Beef and Barnesy show, and said uh, Barn or Hess had said that he won Player of the Year because Barnes didn't bowl all the events, and he said, Tom, I had ball in hand three times against you and didn't do it. You <laughs> earned it. <laughs> So I was going to say if Hess struck out, Barnes would have ball in hand yet again. Ooh. And there's the, the blower nine. So yeah, if Hess would have struck, struck out, out, and that would have been the result, different situation, of course, but Hess could have got there. Right. But I think this is time for us to crown our champion. Congratulations <coughs> to Chris Barnes. Your 2022 PBA 50 Granville Financial Open right here in Aberdeen, North Carolina. There it is. Chris Barnes. Craig's right. Yep. Craig wins. Craig wins. <laughs> Did he hear that? Yeah, he's down there with John. Ah. Oh, he's. <laughs> They're discussing a check and trophy presentation and interview. Victory lap for Barnes. Yep. Two thirty-eight to two eighteen, the final score for those of you writing articles out there. Yeah. Hall of Famer last year, Hall of Famer th or last tournament, Hall of Famer this tournament. Yep. Bam. Bam. Bam Granville coming out. Yeah, that's to, kind of uh, hard to do the say. Chuck and Trophy presentation. Before he does, I'd like to take the opportunity one more time to thank Adam Kraus. The DeChico family, Billy Jr. and Sr., thanks so much for inviting us back. And uh, the staff here is wonderful. You guys are great, and uh, we've sure enjoyed it here. So come on out here, Bam. I don't know if anybody noticed, but Bam's got his own uh, banner up there, 299 I saw. So uh, when he turns 50, we expect him out here. Congratulations again to uh, Chris Barnes. Bam? First, I'd like to thank the house, Sand Hills Bowling Center. Uh, really appreciate the, the score uh, with our name up there. That was a nice touch. We've got plenty of uh, publicity. And I'd like to th uh, thank Bowl TV for being here. You guys did a great job. I've been watching it at home. I wasn't here a whole lot this week, but uh, thank you. Thank you, Bowl TV. And I'd like to thank all the fans for being here and all the bowlers. And congratulations uh, to our champion, the Granville Financial Open, Chris Barnes. You got this big check. I don't. You're gonna you're gonna put that in your car like Happy Gilmore. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, more importantly, here's the real one. Well, this is a good one here. So, there you yeah. go. <laughs> Congratulations, Chris. Well, thank you. Great job. Great job.
And we got another check here for uh, Tom Hess. Congratulations, Tom. Yeah, thank you very much. Go. Thank you for sponsoring. You're Adam, welcome. the DeChicos, everybody here, the, everybody that came out tonight, thank you. Um, Bill, Billy, and Adam, yeah, thank Bill, you. Adam, Brian, uh, the guys, you know, everybody that did everything for me. Kelly, uh, unfortunately, she's going to go bowl her career now. She's done. She's been on it for three weeks. She was unbelievable. Everybody out here, I mean, all the way down to the guys on the truck. Don, Brian, thank you very much for everything you do. And uh, Chris, the <laughs> Hall of Famer, you're my friend. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Bam. Thank you very much. And uh, we hope to be back next year. We sure appreciate everything you've done for us in professional bowling. Thank you. So uh, without further delay, oh, and Brian Myers, thanks so much. I dissed you there. I apologize for that. And uh, we're going to bring out uh, Craig Elliott for a quick interview with the champion, Chris Barnes. Craig? Thanks, Bam. Hey, how about one more round of applause for Tom Hess in the last year that he's had? And I think he covered a lot of the thank yous, but Bam, thank you for watching Bull TV at home, not while you're working, right? All right. <laughs> Chris, congratulations. You picked up a win last year, another win this year. You didn't get the full season in last year, so no chance it's, you know, rookie of the year, player of the year, but any goals or what's happening this year? Well, I, I had my chances, actually. I just needed to win one of those last two matches against Tom, so... Uh, uh, and, and I wasn't able to do it. So they keep asking if we have a rivalry, and I said, well, we don't have a rivalry until both teams actually win. So uh, maybe now we have a rivalry, uh, now that I finally got one under my belt against him. Well, so. well speaking of rivalries, you've had one through the years with, with Tommy Jones, and if I'm not mistaken, this is number yeah. 21 total national. Does that put you ahead? Well, you, you know, it's all on how you count it, and so, uh, yeah, we'll just count it that way. That's right. Yeah, I'm ahead of Tommy now. Uh, yeah, it works for me. Congratulations. We'll see everybody in Mooresville. Let's take it back to the booth. All right, yeah, thanks, Craig. Let's bring it back into the booth. Tom Carter, what a night we had here. It's, this is enjoyable. Every week we get to watch Hall of Famers bowl. I was hoping for Tommy Adcock, you know, the underdog. Yeah. I really was, like I said, both. First-time champion would have been nice. Yes, but. I always like to see new guys win, but it's incredible watching the greats do what they do. How, how, about, how about Barnes getting in there and getting one from Tommy here for a change? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little changing of the guard here, yeah. maybe. Well, you know, he said that now there could be a rivalry since they, yeah. they, they both got something under the belt. They got a bromance going on. That rivalry ain't yeah. happening. Well, we won't talk about that. No, not at all. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for another week. We'll be yeah. here doing it again here soon. Mooresville. Yeah. More at, at Victory Lane. you ever been there? No. This first for me. Oh, boy. Wait till you see this place. Oh, I'm looking forward to yeah. it. Every week it's been great so far. Oh, yeah. We have a good time. I mean, it's yeah. a good time. And I enjoy traveling around when we get to watch some of the greatest players in the world do what they do. And I mean, where else can you go as, as a amateur player, pay your money, and still get to shoe up to the greatest bowlers in the world? Yeah. This, this is an awesome sport. Yeah. And hopefully you're not in the booth next week and you make the show. Well, I, you know, we keep saying that, but we do. We do. <laughs> it's a hope. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for tuning in and watching us tonight here on Bowl TV. This broadcast would not be possible without the great people that helped put it on with me. Brian, who produced tonight, Craig from the sidelines and doing all the commentary throughout the week. I want to thank the home office team as well, Jason Thomas and everybody working hard to make sure that we have everything that we need to be able to provide the best possible streams that we can. We want to thank the folks here from Sand Hills Bowling Center. What an incredible uh, group they have here. Oh, the, they're, they're pristine. They, they are. They are awesome. And we hope to come back many times here in the future. Also want to thank uh, your wife, Linda oh, Carter, for all the work she does behind the scenes. One of the unsung heroes, but she 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 does she loves what she does. We want to thank John Weber and the entire PBA staff, Bolero, of course, as well. All the product registered companies out there, everybody that supports the PBA and PVA 50 tours. Don't forget, everybody, the PWBA is coming up here on Bull TV soon. Yeah. So make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, maybe recorded later, that you sign up for Bull TV. There's a lot of great action happening over yeah. here right. on Bull TV. And where does bowling live? Bowling lives here, but we're not to the tagline yet. Oh, why not? We're not there yet because we have to thank the BPAA, the BPAA board, the USBC and the USBC board as well. And we want to thank all the fans for watching tonight, those that are subscribed. And we want to thank the players for putting on such a great show. Yeah. So here's where we get to do this. You ready? Yes. All right. When it comes to bowling on Bowl TV, yeah. bowling, bowling lives here. Right here. Lives right, right here. here. That's it for us here tonight, everybody. We'll see you on our next broadcast. It's been a blast. Next week, Mooresville. It's going to be awesome.
Hit the little button in the truck guy. Where's our truck guy? Oh, there he he's, is. He's quick this week. Holy cow. 